Welcome to MMA Al Dente, the only YouTube channel that will never beg you to like, share, and subscribe. Please, I'm fucking begging you. All right, UFC 279 here. I'm here to talk about the main event, Chamaya vs. Diaz. I'm going to give you my preview prediction and bets for each fight if you watch each video. Please do that, whatever. Uh, Chamaya vs. Diaz. Um, by the way, I'm doing it video by video like this because I'm not always able to record an hour-long video. You know, I get interruptions and horseshit. So, let's go this way for this week. Chamaya vs. Diaz. I see what you guys see. Let me just say, it's not the greatest main event for a pay-per-view at all, but it will be if Nate Diaz wins. I don't think that's going to happen. Neither do you, I'm sure. But I know you watch a video like this because... You want to hear how, how it can happen. You know, maybe I can convince you. How it can happen, I don't think uh, even the chances are as great as other people say they are, which they say they're very low. He's fighting uh, a guy who will always have a distinct wrestling advantage on him. And I think that holds true under any circumstances. I may not have been as sure of that if uh, I didn't see the fight with Gilbert Burns, but I took so much from that fight, and that's the most recent fight. And I don't even remember when it was, but it was just a few months ago, it seems like, maybe six months ago, I don't know. And uh, fighting a guy like Nate Diaz, you know, even those moments in which Gilbert Burns had Chemaev in a lot of danger, I don't see Nate Diaz being able to find that type of success. And a lot of that is just... Physically and athletically, I mean. He's not Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns is a guy who's shorter, stronger, more powerful, and throws bombs. He's got an overhand right. You know, Nate Diaz doesn't even have an overhand punch. He leads with his power punch. You know, he's uh, uh, he's not going to be able to... I mean, he could... He, and the Diaz brothers are deceptively good. But I'm saying to hurt Chemayev enough where you can seize the opportunity... And, you know, his takedown prowess isn't there because he's so hurt or whatever. I just, I don't see Nate Diaz having that availability here. Like, guys like Burns have one-punch knockout power or, you know, knockdown power. Nate Diaz has two-punch power. That's that's the thing. Uh, you know, a lot of his great moments are two punches and every other moment is ten punches. They're volume guys. I know it only takes one punch to get the ball rolling. Usually, you know, a lead right hook from a Diaz hurt you or whatever, but uh, still against Chemaev with the recoverability, if that's a fucking word, I don't know, uh, that he showed in his fight against Gilbert Burns, I think uh, the chances of Diaz getting the finish, which is a victory, by the way, if you bet on Diaz via decision, stop watching this video. I don't need your subscription. No, please, stick around. No, but yeah, he's not going to win a decision, but uh, probably not going to get a finish either, but if he gets a win, it's via finish, and... If he gets a win via finish, knockout, or submission, his hands are going to have to hurt Chemayev. He's going to have to hurt him with punches before he even gets a submission. So, I just see, uh, like, even if he was hurt, Chemayev, again, under any circumstances, if he's hurt, if he's exhausted, kicked in the balls, whatever, I still see him being able to ragdoll Nate Diaz on a moment's notice, uh, you know. So, the chances of Nate Diaz winning, I'm saying, they're probably even lower than we think they are again uh you know if he's raw if i if he wins i'll get a 209 tattoo in my fucking mouth all right but uh that's what john anik did he got not on his mouth wherever his arm but um chamayev is a guy who offensively i just i have a lot of faith in him i don't like him by the way i'll get that out right now i'm always rooting against chamayev and i don't mean that like he's so good i want him to i want someone to beat him no, i don't like him I don't like him. I think he's like a dickhead. And this is me making this video not in res response to the press, the lack of the press conference, the canceled press conference, which was just two hours ago or whatever, a few hours ago. But uh, it's in response to just the way he carries himself. And I know he's young, he's brash, cut some slack. I don't cut anybody slack, you know, except for myself. I give myself slack and then I hold everybody else, whatever. All right. Uh, Chemayev versus Diaz, I think, you know, Chemayev's got the, too much offense for Nate Diaz. You know, wrestling-wise, I always, I went into it that I think the wrestling will be there, but just the proof of that is him ragdolling Jack Hermanson. 
and that was in a wrestling match. And then you've got the fights against bigger guys, certainly not the grapplers that, of Nate Diaz caliber, aside from Gilbert Burns, but, you know, ragdolling Li Jing Liang. And um, he's a big, strong guy, and Chemaev is just a big, strong guy from another planet. And by that, I mean from another weight class, eventually. And Nate Diaz, look, getting finished, that's a pretty tall order. He's been finished a few times. He was finished three times. Once was a cut, which I don't count cuts. That's why Chris Lytle's the toughest guy in MMA history. Overall, most versatile, toughest guy. And uh, Nate Diaz, you know, he's been finished twice legitimately. Josh Thompson kicked him in the head, which wasn't enough. And then Nate Diaz was fighting on zombie mode for another 30 seconds. But he was put away there. And Hermes Franca, you know, the, the guy from Thompson's era, those guys that were better than Nate Diaz, bef you know, before Nate Diaz was good. And uh, they caught him on, the, on his way up, and they were too much for him. Thompson happened later inside the UFC, but just a few years before that was uh, Hermes Franca, right before Nate went on The Ultimate Fighter, maybe a year before that, and Hermes armbarred him. Nate, he's a guy who I look at the Diaz brothers like I look at the Noguera brothers where they have endless jujitsu. Their jujitsu is, you know... It's never going to fail them, but it's failed them. It's failed Noguera a few times in the end of his career. And Nate Diaz was tapped by Hermes Franca. Hermes Franca, you know, like I said, he was one of the best fighters in the world. If the UFC had a title belt back then, he would have been a lightweight challenger. And Nate Diaz kicked his ass. This uh, was in, uh, whatever, but before the Ultimate Fighter, Nate Diaz kicked his ass and then got caught with a very sloppy armbar from the guard. I'm not saying that's ever going to happen. I don't expect Nate to be in Chemayev's guard, but I'm just saying a submission is always a possibility, no matter what you think of the fighter. And Chemayev is one of the only guys I could see submitting Nate Diaz. I think it would have to be very deliberate, and I still don't trust that he could do it because Nate is so good defensively, jujitsu-wise. Uh, but it's a possibility. Uh, Nate is a guy who, you know, again, those few finishes, it's... Talking about them, it takes a minute or two, and, you know, it seems like it takes forever, and all these losses, it's over the course of 20 years, or 15 years, inside the UFC. Well, the the other loss, the Hermes, was outside the UFC. So, call it 20 years, he's been fighting and grinding, and only two guys have put him away. So, his durability hasn't failed him, and I'd love to see it stay intact here, but I, intact here, but I don't see it happening. Chemayev, again, he's too strong, offensively, grappling-wise, and... You know, all it takes is one advantageous position. He's going to have to go through the Diaz, Nate Diaz's jiu-jitsu to get it done in one way or another. And I mean throwing a hook in and pinning Nate against the cage or, you know, uh, actually going through his guard, crucifix, whatever, this and that, I think is most likely course to a finish where if you put a gun to Hamzat's head and said, don't go for the submission, don't go for the standing knockout, do, whatever, do whatever's going to get you the victory because you have a gun to your head, he wins via ground and pound in one way or another. Nate is just too skinny. I'd hate to even sound like that. It sounds like somebody who has no appreciation for fighting, which maybe I don't. But that's a factor, you know. It was a factor going into Islam Makachev versus Bobby Green. That was just Bobby Green with those skinny hips. And look at, uh, well, it's what I saw when I saw Hab, uh, Khabib versus uh, Tony Ferguson, when that fight never materialized, but that fight was booked, everybody was talking about Tony Ferguson's ground game and the triangles and the elbows and whatever, and I just never saw any of that being a factor. I said, Khabib's going to get that skinny, those skinny hips down, he's going to mount them, he's going to sit on them, and he's going to pound the shit out of Tony, maybe strangle him. And, uh, of course, Tony was mounted by Danny Castillo and Kevin Lee, Nate Diaz, I don't remember him being mounted, like, like the Nogueras and whatever I was saying before with endless jiu-jitsu. I don't remember anybody mounting Nate Diaz and, you know, the Nogueras too. The Noguera was mounted a few times by Verdun, came out the back door. And that's the type of jiu-jitsu Nate has, but I just think in this case, fighting a super monster from another weight class, another fucking planet, and with the age and everything else going against Nate Diaz, I see uh, Hamzat finding success positionally on the ground and if he really put, puts his heart into it he's going to find a finish with ground and pound that's my prediction and I'm betting on that for the fight you know uh, I'd love to see it go the other way I really would but I just just think Hamzat's too good and 
you know, it, it would still be a sight to behold watching somebody finish Nate Diaz in any realm, aside from, you know, scar tissue, which, like, Jorge Masvidal finished him with, which I didn't get into, but that's a factor. You know, he's been cut up and beaten up, and he could absolutely be put away in a fight like this in that way. But that shit aside, uh, Hamza Chemaev, you know, I think uh, I just trust his grappling. I trust his grappling, and I absolutely trust his strength and his wrestling in this fight. But if he's able to find any success grappling, just uh, Nate is going to be pinned and beaten down. So my bets for the fight are, my prediction for the fight is Hamza Chemaev wins. I'm going first round TKO on the ground. My bets for the fight are uh, Nate Diaz via, it should be via finish, because I had to cover that. I had to cover my Nate Diaz bet. You know, on BetUS.com, they fucked up. They have the money line at plus 750 and the finish at plus 700, which is stupid, obviously. The money line uh, it covers the finish and the decision, so it should be much lower. Or really, the finish should be higher because the money line seems consistent with uh, other books. But uh, I've got Nate Diaz winning via money line uh, there, really by finish, because there's no way he wins a decision. So if the bet the numbers are right, I'd bet on finish. And I've got Hamza Chemaev winning first round knockout, second round knockout, plus two fifty, plus four fifty, I think. But really, round one plus two fifty. And I've played the under, under one and a half rounds, plus odds, plus one twenty five. The main reason I played the under is because I'm able to pair with other things for a parlay. You can't parlay on BetUS. You can't parlay prop bets. So under one and a half rounds, uh, Hamza Chemaev, Nate Diaz. And I really hope it's Nate Diaz knocking him out, but uh, remains to be seen. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys, and please check out my other videos.